the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. It is balanced. There are no fees. There is no managed competition. And there are no layoffs. It, however, is a very challenging budget because it means that all of the reforms that people committed themselves to last week on Thursday evenings, we are really go and which we will pass in council, we are going to actually have to see through over this coming year so that we can put this budget structurally in balance. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. Budgeting, whether for a business or a government, is always difficult, especially in economically stressed times. But for governments, budgeting has to be done in public, in front of employees, constituents, and reporters. Which is why Otto von Bismarck, the first chancellor of Germany, said, laws are like sausages. It is better not to see them being made. The city of Cincinnati went through its sausage making process in December, beginning with recommendations from the city manager and mayor and then a month of debate and negotiation by council. The issue now is where do we go from here? I am joined this morning by Councilman, Council Member Roxanne Qualls, the chair of the Council Finance Committee, and Jeff Birding, a member of council who chairs the Government Operations Committee. He has been an outspoken critic of the recently adopted budget. Welcome to Newsmakers. Good Both morning. Good morning. Um, Roxanne, I use that particular soundbite because mm -hmm. it looks towards the future. Your point is reforms have to be made in the next year to make this budget make any sense. What are the top two priorities for you in those reforms and what's it going to take to get them done? Well, I'm going to respond to that by saying that actually there are two things. One is we, pa we passed a number of policy reforms such as looking at um, you know, Cincinnati Police Department and the Hamilton County Sheriff's looking at the, our health clinic system and our health department system and the county health department system as well as the entire system of uh, um, services to indigent uh, individuals in the community. Ma those would be major reforms if we could actually figure out how we eliminate redundancies and continue delivering services. Um, but on the second level, which and I think an equally important level, what we need to do is my position was we needed to pass a budget to avoid the continuation budget, which would have been much, much worse. Um, but that just because the budget was passed, we still need to revisit the issue of putting in place a system of managed competition to interject competition in the environment in which we are actually delivering services, and two, revisit the garbage fee uh, in the context of managed competition. We don't have to wait a year to do that. We can do that within the month if we actually can have a meeting of the minds. Jeff, um, are those couple of things also priorities for you? And if so, what is the likelihood of being able to do that, whether in a month or two months? What's it going to take to get those sorts of things done? Well, there's certainly priorities in creating a regional EMS district so that the communities around Cincinnati share ambulance services. Uh, combining parks and rec and we're going to take that to the voters in order to save money in the administration of the parks and recreation departments. Th these would all be transformative initiatives and I know that the Vice Mayor Qualls and I share a, a passion to see those things through. The challenge is the unions have really control of, of much of the council uh, and you have council members who want to appease the unions with taxpayer money. And I've been for five years fighting for these kind of changes and come up short in every instance because the unions really are running the show. And, you know, council members come and go, but the unions are always still there. And that's the challenge. So do you think, I mean, it's one thing to fight things out in public, in hearings, in council chambers or someplace else, and have union members stand up and union leaders, whatever, and all of that. but. Is it possible to be in serious meetings with union member, union leadership now and start saying, we've got to change things, we don't, and not just even wait until the, the contract is up? I'll offer, we had a $60 million deficit for much of 2010, and the unions stood silently doing nothing other than fighting to preserve a status quo that's bankrupting the city. So no, I don't think that you're going to get any help from the unions. I think that they've proven that over the past few years, and that's all the unions. Uh, I, I, I think that 
you know, we, there's an election year coming up and the unions are going to make their voices heard. If you do anything to hurt our members, if you do anything that might cost us jobs, we're going to oppose you in your election. If you have council members whose first priority is winning re-election, they're going to they're remember that and they're not going to step out in front of the unions. Roxanne, what do you think about that? Well, I think that a couple of things, and when we talk about um, unions, we need to remember we're talking police, fire, and also AFSCME, which most people would think of as public service workers, plus also health department and others. Um, I think particularly with police and fire, the big challenge is, is that um, you have people on council who, uh, it, whenever the city manager recommends cutting police and fire, um, take the position there should be absolutely no cuts to police and fire. Um, the irony of the situation with this budget that passed, and which I voted for, is that I would have supported laying off 50 police officers and you know I would have preferred to have minimized the number of firefighters laid off knowing that we would actually be recalling those folks very quickly within the 2011. Because, because of, of retirements, retirements and, so, and all those things. So there's and, still been a reduction right. in force but bring so, that. So what you, you need to be a little careful because on the one hand folks can rail against the unions, on the other hand to take a position that every time the manager tries to bring a budget in balance that involves some form of layoffs and perhaps you don't support all of them but you really undermine any ability to negotiate with them. Now, AFSCME is a little different, and you know, when we're dealing with things such as garbage and solid waste, you know, uh, delivery of services, you know, that fight was about can we interject some level of competition into that? And um, on a state and national level, there is adamant opposition to that. My own personal feeling is that if you provide public sector resource uh, sector workers with the resources they need. To compete, they can compete effectively, and we've shown that within our own parks department. Um, but we're going to have to push through that resistance uh, to get there. And that's using Jeff's model. That's pushing through the political resistance. Well, it's pushing, especially for Democrats. It's pushing through the well. I think it's pushing through the political resistance. But I would also make the argument it is actually um, political people, basically sitting at a table and actually talking compromise in a, in a workable compromise. My own uh, proposal at this point is that if we want to see managed competition, what we need to do is instruct the city manager to come back with us, to us with a program that works. That's his job. He believes in it. Mm -hmm. He actually is willing to do it. And instead of it being the individual program of an individual council member, let the manager do his job. Jeff, what do you think? How, how, how could we get manage competition in the foreseeable future here? Well, I, I think that uh, Roxanne's suggestion is a fine one, and during the budget discussions we talked about that. I think the concern is that if you just trust the city manager uh, and give the garbage fee the support that you can start taxing people for the garbage, that if the city manager t puts his foot on the scale or his administration puts their foot on the scale to ensure that the public workers retain the program, retain their jobs, that there really is no competition. If the city manager says, we have to pay the same benefits, the same wages, the same retirement, the private sector is not going to bid. And so there's a skepticism that it will be done appropriately, and the skepticism is founded in what happened with the street sweeping contract, which was also supposed to be done through managed competition, and, and I think by many people's feelings, fell short. Roxanne used an image here before, and Jeff, I want you to talk about it a little bit. The image of we need to get people s sitting around the table and really finding a compromise. During this budget process, I mean, what the public saw was when you came into public, when you came into session. The sausage making. The sausage making in public. Were there times when the nine of you could sit around the same table and... and well, Dan, first of all, nine of us cannot sit around the same table unless it isn't public, so just so you know that. Okay, that's you true. Know. No, we just did a show on that. I do you know, know that. Yeah, so, so that means that there are, but there are times when people can sit around the table, but in numbers less than five okay. and have conversations. Well, let me, let me put it this way then, and it's the reason you two are here. I mean, I think of both of you as serious, intelligent public service servants who have maybe differences of views on certain things, okay, be that as it may. Can people with differences on council sit down in smaller groups and really negotiate and talk? Is that going on right now? Yes. 
I mean, uh, look, the two of us worked, I think, extraordinarily well together for mm -hmm. several months on the budget. And I think if it was up to the two of us, if we could have had each a couple votes apiece, we could have done a transformative budget, but we each only get one vote. So no, I think those kind of serious dialogues happen. I think there was certainly good faith between the two of us and some of our colleagues. Um, we just, we fell short, and I view it, we fell short because at the end the unions came in and, and strong-armed people. Let's, let's talk about one of the bigger proposals that got surfaced mm -hmm. was the idea of taking the road patrol of the police and moving it over to the sheriff's office, mm -hmm. sheriff's department. Um, that's beginning, and you've already re referenced this in other areas too, really looking for some collaboration across regional, local government lines. What's it gonna take to make that happen? I mean, are people serious about that or was that sort of, uh, you know, something to throw on the table and stir things up? I mean, is it, can, can something like that really be done here? Well, I think a couple of things I think are important to say. Number one is that when people do talk about whether you want to put it under the name regionalism or regional cooperation. The reality of it is, and people have known this for a long time, is that there are two key services which are cost centers for everyone, police and emergency services, meaning fire, fire. and emergency medical services delivered by fire. Um, so you can talk around the subject all you want and talk about other things, but you're not going to see the real cost savings until you look at those two areas. And my own feeling is, is that I know I am and I believe Jeff is and I hope the others who have also talked about this are committed because we do need to look at this. Is there a more efficient, effective way of delivering safety services to citizens that actually decrease response time, improve the number of, um, improve the safety in our neighborhoods by putting more people uh, and, and of course, it's not just about the city anymore. Once you would do that, you would be, you'd be taking countywide. Look, countywide, so that uh, especially with uh, fire and emergency health response, it's where you could place fire departments and you know make that all much more rational. But there's than it is. huge resistance to that. You there's know, huge so, resistance to any all of so, this. You stuff. know, Jeff was mentioning you know big resistance from the unions. On the other hand, what I think people need to realize is that when you're talking about these types of real transformative changes that people talk easily about, um, people have a, very, a vested interest in how things are. And so resistance is, is very high. And so our job is to demonstrate, one, this would be improve service quality, but also that ultimately it would save money. Jeff? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That? I mean, we have uh, 790 some officers, sworn officers that the taxpayers pay for in the patrol bureau. Only 300 of them a day are out patrolling the streets of Cincinnati responding to 911 calls. 491 are doing other things. The sheriff said he could double the number of police officers on patrol, 300 to 600, and still double or uh, cut in half the response time. So when you call, someone's breaking into your house, 911, half the time now an officer's at your door and save 20% of the money. I mean, how could taxpayers think that that's anything but, are, but a great deal? Aren't there some legal issues? It's not just political questions here. It's also some legal issues about does that violate the contract? Does that violate the consent decree with uh, the, the... Well, the sheriff said that he would abide by the, the consent decree and the collaborative agreement. And it is a political decision on how we spend our money. It's a political decision. That is not Should a legal question. Should it only question. be about the road patrols or should be be about the entire department? Well, I think that the, the first priority is um, looking at road patrol. Um, and, you know, we can always get into looking at the entire department, but, but what I would rather do is just let's talk about how do we improve safety very quickly and very effectively. Does this make it more complex to hire a new uh, chief of police? Mm -hmm. the, the fact that there's unknowns going, this discussion about where things are going? Well, I think actually if I were a prospective candidate as a police chief of the city of Cincinnati, I would find this very exciting because you're actually being asked to look at how do you deliver a very essential basic service in a way that is non-traditional and means major changes and here's your opportunity. I have one last thing. Having just come through this whole process, where are the two of you personally in terms of your commitment to continue doing this? Uh, is this something that, you know, this is hard work and this is not easy. 
Jeff, where are you on this? Well, uh, I do take this seriously, and I have worked very hard for five years to try to lead for change and bring the kind of transformation of city government that I think would make Cincinnati much more livable. I know Roxanne shares the same commitment. Uh, and it is disappointing when you put in an awful lot of work to really bring that transformation to serve the citizens better um, and not get it done. Uh, so it's been a welcome break this past week and I look forward to another few days before we get back at it. And you know, I know there's, this is an election year and I'll have decisions to make down the road. Will you run again? I don't know. Okay. Roxanne? Well, I have to say that I love my job. Okay. Even and with all this stuff? Well, even with all this stuff, sure, you know, it's frustrating. Sure, do I wish things turned out differently? Absolutely. Um, but the challenge that you have, and I think it's a nice situation, is you go back in there and you fight. You know, you don't walk off the field of battle. And so, and that's always been my attitude, and so we go back in. And um, I have come in my lifetime to understand that um, the motto that the one left standing is the one who wins. Hmm. And that when you see real transformative change occur in society and in companies and in organizations, I think one key ingredient is can you just stay with it? Hmm. Because change does not come easy. Very interesting point. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your service. And go right back at it <laughs> and let's get on top of this right from the beginning and solve some things in January and February. Stay tuned, after a short break, we will, be, we will remain focused on the future of the city of Cincinnati. I'll be joined by Amy Murray, who will be sworn into council this Wednesday. Thank you. Welcome back. The election of Chris Monzel to a seat on the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners created a vacancy on City Council. Last week, Republican Party recommended Amy Murray, and she will be formally proposed by Republican Council members Charlie Winburn and Leslie Giz and sworn in this coming Wednesday. Ms. Murray ran for council in 2009 for the first time, finishing 12th, just 5,100 votes out of ninth place. She has worked for Procter & Gamble and has been the president of the Hyde Park Community Council. Amy speaks Japanese and has worked with companies that do business in Asia. She is currently the president and interim director of the Japan America Society. I need to point out that the society is headquartered at the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber, where I also work. Welcome to Newsmakers. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, you were here during the campaign. Exactly. And uh, it was a very good campaign. I think you certainly distinguished yourself, and um, I think this is the result. So congratulations. The second thing and the first question is, why do you want to do this after we just went through December and you were here in the studio when I was interviewing Roxanne and Jeff? Why do you want to do this? You know, it's so funny because right now when people say congratulations on receiving the appointment and joining council, and the second question is why? And I think when you are elected in November, you don't get that because they haven't just gone through the budget process. So I think right now the budget process is on everyone's mind, and council, it came off as a little dysfunctional. So people are wondering why would you want to join that group. But I believe so much in the city of Cincinnati and that I have strengths that I can bring to it, my business background, and I'm just ready to take it on. And I think we just saw a glimpse of it in the last month that maybe wasn't the best glimpse. Um, I think during the year the council does a lot of really wonderful things for the city, and I'm just ready to take it on and do what I can to move Cincinnati forward. What do you think those, I mean, being specific, Yes. what do you think your qualities are that may change the dynamic somewhat. No one person changes everything. So I'm not asking that, but how do you think you bring things that may change the dynamic? Sure. Well, when you have a council with nine individuals and they all have different constituencies that they're looking at, I think I bring a lot of consensus building. My background's been in Asia. And in Asia, to get anything done, you have to have consensus building and work well with others. And so I think that's one thing I can bring. I work well to, with others, so I'm hoping that as we plan the next budget as we plan things I can get other people's ideas and work together and I think my business background I was an economics major we have to have a sound budget and I will work so hard so that we have a sound budget 
the pension, that hasn't been talked about for a while. And I think that's a huge issue. I certainly would rather be coming into council when we didn't have all these issues. But this is where we are and we need to deal with them. Can't bury our heads in the sand. We have to deal with the pension. We have to get a budget that is really fiscally stable. You listened to Roxanne and Jeff, and they were saying that some things can be, we don't have to wait till next budget yes. process. We can do some things fairly quickly and uh, move things forward around the area of managed competition, for example, mm -hmm. or exploring really the, uh, uh, the, the question of road patrols for the police department. Yes. You're gonna have to hit the ground running if they're serious about mm -hmm. that. What are your priorities early on and what do you think has to happen to make to allow those things to happen? Sure. Well, the first thing is I think we need to change the budget process. You know, people that are making decisions at 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve are not going to be making the wisest decisions. So we have the ability to move the budget process earlier in the year, in the fall, and I think we need to do that. But how do you do that? This is going to be an election year. You know what, I think you have to have enough people on council that are willing to say, you know what, this is important, this is how we can make the best decisions, let's do it. And I know it's hard with an election year, but I think we've got to do the right thing. How early do you think it should start? You know what, and I'm new to this, and so I don't want to just speak glib okay. because I haven't right. been through it. So I would like to talk to Roxanne Qualls, who's the chair of the budget committee, and some other folks. But I think, you know, as they said, we should be talking about some of it right now, and I think we should be looking at the budget in late summer, early fall, and be well, putting in it together. Well, in that sense, uh, you don't have to wait for the budget process. Absolutely. The budget process can be really should be all year long. Yes. In that sense. And I think it should be finalized way before the Christmas holidays. <laughs> I think everybody would agree <laughs> so with that. People, so we can make rash decisions. You know, one of the, one of the things about that, though, and I, I, that first question I asked you was a little bit glib, but um, realistically, both residents mm -hmm. of Cincinnati, but equally important, people who don't live in Cincinnati, but they live in our area, they see something like that budget process in December go on, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, I am not going to consider moving inside the city. Yes how much damage do you think that sort of thing does and what do we have to do in order to ch you know to change that dynamic mm -hmm. Well, and I think the past few years, we've seen a council that has worked more effectively than in the past, and so I'm just saddened that this last month has really reflected poorly. And that's an important thing to remind people of. Yeah. Things have been very different. Things have been better. And so I think if we change the budget process, we get rid of this scramble in December. And, and I think it's important because people that are in the suburbs that are not in the city of Cincinnati but that work here, we need more people to want to move to the city of Cincinnati. We need to give businesses a reason to come to the city of Cincinnati. And I think one of the things is, I'm a huge taxpayer advocate, we need to keep taxes reasonable. We can't, we have to live within our means as a city. And you know, I just don't support passing on taxes to residents and businesses. We need to give them a reason to stay here. I know you haven't had a chance to take a look at all the specifics, and I yes. don't want to try to pin you down on that. Appreciate but are you, going into this saying that there are some absolutes that you won't ever consider like a garbage fee mm -hmm. or you won't ever consider a cut in um, uh, the number of police mm -hmm. or whatever. Are there's, are there some absolutes that you say can't ever be on the table as far as you're concerned? Nope, because that's not the way I do business because I'm not an expert in all these areas and so my plan is to sit down with the police, sit down with the fire, sit down with people on both sides of these issues and really come to a reasonable conclusion and look at that because with the sixty million dollar deficit you have to make tough choices so i think if you go in i don't want to do this to be honest i don't want to have a tax fee on garbage i don't think that's the right things for our residents but i'm not putting a line, line in the sand because i need to do more research on it what about the, the big broad question of collaboration across local government lines mm -hmm maybe short of merger, yeah. but, you know, UniGov and all those third rail questions. Are you open to looking at those sorts of things? Oh, I'm open and positive. I think we need to do what we can for the region and for the city of Cincinnati. So I think we need to look into managed competition. Not that we're headed that way, but I think in every area we need to say, are we using taxpayer money most effectively and are we providing the best service? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you could imagine the road patrol moving under the sheriff? 
I'm not there yet. I haven't talked to the FOP. I haven't talked to the police. I haven't talked to the sheriff. But I think we need to look at it. I think everything has to be on the table right now. Jeff but Burning, I want to make a wise decision. Jeff Burding was making a big point about the control of the unions. Yes. You're a Republican. Are you anti-union? Oh, no. I, I mean, I think the union serves some of their members well. Um, I personally think some of our union contracts probably haven't served the city as well as they do, but the union leaders do a good job for the unions. Amy, thanks for being here this morning. Good luck and we'll obviously be having you back as, as this all develops. Well, I look forward. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Join us again next week to meet the men and the women working to shape our community for the future. Have a good week.